Okay, let's shift gears now to the base metals. Uh, Elon Musk in his second quarter earnings call uh, has made this statement. I'm just going to read it. Tesla will give you a giant contract for a long period of time if you mine nickel efficiently and in an environmentally sustainable way. Um, how are you interpreting this message? Why is there such an interest from Musk to you know have miners produce as much nickel as possible right now? So we've done a lot of surveys of, uh, of car owners around the world, and it doesn't matter whether you sit in Toronto or if you sit in Texas or if you sit in Denmark or Norway or, or China, for that example. Everyone wants the same two things in their vehicle they have today, and that is it drives as long or has as long of a range as my gas car, and it recharges as quick as my gas car. Now, technologies today are heading to a place where we can do that. But in order to do that, we need certain metals. And the one metal we really need uh, in the cathode uh, of, a, of a car, you have a cathode or an anode, and lithium goes back and forth, pretty easy stuff, is you need nickel. Nickel is really, really good at holding electrons. And so we've seen batteries add more and more nickel at the expense of other metals, particularly cobalt. Um, and as you put in more and more nickel, um, you, you, you can get longer range batteries, you can get batteries that actually recharge faster. The problem is um, we saw a huge decline in the nickel price uh, over the last seven or eight years, went from around 50,000 down to under 10,000. Um, today we're at about 13,500. Um, major miners in the world haven't invested in nickel mines. And so Elon, he can talk all he wants about getting large amounts of nickel from ecological friendly mines. Uh, as of today, they, you know, they don't really exist. Um, if they do exist, they've already been sold out. So he has a real problem because he can see the huge demand coming for cars. He knows he's going to need a lot of nickel. He has no clue where he's going to get that nickel from. So you we actually what? believe in a few years you could have a lot of tightness in the nickel market. Yeah, so uh, that's a good point. Elon Musk actually has in the past teased the idea of just opening up his own mines. Are you, are you, can you see more vertical integration within the um, auto industry going forward? Well, I mean, he can he can tease it all he wants. Uh, I don't think uh, Tesla will become a miner. Um, I think they don't actually they don't want the ecological problems that the miners face with every day. Um, I do, however, you are seeing more and more of auto companies sign very long term lucrative agreements with the miners. We've seen that in lithium. We've seen that in cobalt. Uh, we have not seen that in nickel, um, except for a, um, a marketing arrangement between BASF and Norilsk of Russia. You really don't see a lot going on in the nickel markets. Part of the problem is there isn't a lot, big chunky uh, amounts of nickel. Most most car companies will want 25 to 50 thousand metric tons of contained nickel a year in there in the nickel product for the for the batteries. That's a lot. There's aren't many mines around the world that can provide that. And then to meet Musk, other uh, attribute which the governments are, are forcing him. Make sure it's very low carbon footprint, make sure it uses uh, very little water, make sure it's economically safe. There aren't too many mines that can do that, so it gives them a problem. Ken, what's McKinsey's outlook on auto demand during, uh, during this post-COVID level uh, or uh, era, should I say? I mean, on the one hand, we have a lot of consumers who want social distancing, which means they want to stay away from public transit. But on the other hand, a lot of people are... Um, seeing their incomes and uh, you know jobs sort of um, taper off they're, 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 they're experiencing higher savings rates how, how are you interpreting this this dichotomy here I think we put it into two buckets there I think we put it into overall vehicle demand which we think will will take about three years to recover back to pre-covid levels but then you put it into the buckets of, of uh, electric vehicles versus internal combustion engines and we continue to see electric vehicles really take off. Um, in fact, there's been a problem in Europe where people have such a thirst for electric vehicles, um, they're sold out. I mean, you just can't buy any electric vehicles over there. You're seeing 9 10% penetration rates in EVs in many countries. Um, good thing, if you're an EV driver, there's about a 97% chance if you own an EV, your next car will be an EV. You, you like can't even like why on earth would I buy an internal combustion engine and so so you will see sort of a dichotomy of great growth for those electric vehicles uh, not so good growth for internal combustion engines which which isn't very good for for some areas like uh, for PGM metals okay this new trend of integrating blockchain technology with mining and uh, I'm wondering how this could be a driver for production. Uh, going forward, do you see this having an impact? 
Blockchain is very, very interesting. I've spent quite a bit of time on this, actually. I know some people who are doing some, some pretty interesting things in blockchain. Um, and, and it's very interesting. The idea behind it is you want transparency. So you worry about blood diamonds or blood gold, or you worry about um, conflict uh, cobalt coming out of the, the DRC. How do you, can you ensure to all the parties up and down the value chain, so from the mining company all the way through to the consumer, that the materials in the product they're buying um, were ethically and responsibly produced? And so that's what blockchain is. I mean, blockchain in essence is everyone can see the same document at the same time. So the idea is maybe if it's cobalt, you have a bag, you're showing pretty much the cobalt going in the bag from a mine we've already been responsibly produced and having a barcode and then it goes through every step of the, uh, of the uh, uh, refining chain and you can actually see it come all the way through to your car. It's an interesting concept. Can it be messed around with? Uh, the cynics say yes, it can. Um, you know, I can show one bag. How do I know that bag is in my car? Um, right. But I think it is something you will see more and more of going forward. What's really interesting is the trading of materials, getting around exchanges. That's going to be a really interesting, like cheaper ways to sort of trade materials. So you're saying blockchain is used more of the as a tracking device um, for some of these um, processed metals. What well, what about what about like um, artificial intelligence and um, new technologies being introduced in the marketplace? Could you see any sort of technological breakthrough in the near term to medium term that could really push production to new levels of efficiency? We're seeing a lot of that. In fact, one of the things we do quite a bit at McKinsey is use artificial intelligence in the, in the mining and refining of materials. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've seen some tremendous uh, numbers out of refineries where we basically have programs go in and work with the, the mine operators, but really sort of be like a supercomputer set of eyes over your shoulder to make sure you're using all the proper levels of, of, of materials and uh, a, a, that you're putting through the refineries and through the smelters, etc., uh, making sure that the rock coming out of the mine is all being processed as best as possible. You can see some very, very large um, increases in your productivity and a drastic reduction in cost. There's some actually some big some big copper miners have actually publicly come out and said how they worked with us on that. Watch that. That's going to continue to be a really, really big way going forward. So if productivity, efficiency, are going to improve, and uh, as technology really brings in a new era of production, do you see the supply and demand fundamentals get thrown out of whack here? Can we see a saturated supply in the market? Well, Mother Nature sort of is the counterbalance to, to everything else that we're trying to do as mankind. Mines, by and large, are getting lower and lower grades. They're getting in tougher, tougher places to operate. They're getting into deeper and deeper places to operate. So from that standpoint, you have Mother Nature sort of making the mining, uh, the, the materials, a lot harder to mine. On the other hand, we're trying to offset that using uh, artificial intelligence, uh, um, using different sorts of smart mining techniques. Net, net uh, costs continue to slowly rise, to tell you the truth, even, even despite our best efforts. And that's just because of what, uh, what Earth has given us. Mm -hmm.